What's up, YouTube? I'm here to do my prediction video for UFC Fight Night Hunt versus Olink Alexi. First fight on the bottom is Marab uh, Davishvili versus Tyrion Ware. And to me, I feel really bad for Marab. I felt like he won his last fight. I felt like that call towards the end was bullshit. I felt like he was winning that fight the whole time. And then they said he was out. I didn't think he was out. And the fight was over. So it, it was really weird. I feel like he's had two really close fights in the UFC, and he's 0-2 right now, but I've seen from his skills, he, he's way better than that record. Tyrion Ware, too. You know, Tyrion Ware, I think he's 0-2 as well, and both those fights were really, really close. So I feel bad for these guys because they feel like they're really good guys that just kind of came up on the wrong end of decisions that were really close, especially Tyrion Ware, too. I thought he beat um, that French dude who's a big up-and-comer. I thought it was pretty clear that he won. I am leaning towards Marab. I think that his takedowns are going to edge him out all the rounds. I think that their striking is probably going to be close, but I'm leaning towards Marab. I say he, like I said, gets a lot of takedowns. He, he fights at a really high pace, and I think he just edges every round. Next is Ramazan. I can't say a lot of these guys' last names, these crazy European dudes' names, versus Stefan. And to me, Stefan looks like he's actually a pretty decent up-and-comer, pretty well-rounded, but there's so many late notice injuries on this card that this is one of them. I don't think that he is going to be able to beat Rosamond. I think Rosamond's wrestling and overall striking technique is too good. I think Rosamond will be able to consistently uh, just keep up with him on the feet and then just grind him out against the fence or on the ground. So I got Rosamond winning an easy decision. Next is Jordan Johnson versus Adam. Um, this fight is really weird because Jordan Johnson's fighting at middleweight, and it wasn't like he was a small like, heavyweight, so I don't know what this weight cut's going to do to him cardio-wise. He should win this fight, but you never know. Like I said, when guys do weight cuts like that, sometimes it affects their cardio really bad. Like He's not the biggest light heavyweight ever, but I mean, uh, Rumble Johnson wasn't either, but you could see his conditioning at 205 was way better than 70, or 85. So that's my one and only fear, is that Jordan Johnson's uh, conditioning might not be at the level that it needs to be, but who knows? Adam looks like he's okay, but it's hard to tell how good he really is. He, I feel like he was just fighting a bunch of mediocre people. So I'm leaning towards Jordan Johnson. I think he's just going to out-wrestle him for three rounds, but like I said, this one's close just because of the big weight cut, but I'm leaning towards Jordan Johnson. Next is Magomed versus Marcin, and to me, both these guys are decent strikers. They both had their debut and lost. The difference is Magomed was like 10 8 every round against Paul Craig and then got caught in a triangle at the very end. As where Desmond, um, as where Marcin got knocked out really early by Sam Alvey. And both these guys are primarily strikers, and I'm leaning towards Magomed just because, like I said, in his debut, he looked fucking amazing and then got caught in a triangle, as where Marcin was just getting outstruck. So they're both strikers, but I'm leaning towards Magomed. I say he wins by either decision or knockout. Next is uh, Murbeck Taisumov versus Desmond Green. And I just feel like these guys fight the exact same way. They're both strikers with decent takedown defense, but I think Murbeck has just got more power and speed in his punches. I don't think he'll knock out Desmond Green, but I do think he's going to be able to outpoint him for three rounds. So that's the way I'm leaning. I think um, Murbeck just wins a unanimous decision. Next, we got Rustam Habilov versus Cajun Johnson. And I feel like this fight's going to go just like Cajun Johnson's last fight. I think Islam Makhachev took him down pretty easily and submitted him pretty quick. I don't know if Rustam will be able to submit him because I think Islam had the better uh, submission ability overall. But I do think he should be able to take him down just as easily. I think Rustam's wrestling ability is better than Islam's is. And I just see him either winning a dominant decision or eventually winning by TKO or in a good choke. Next is Peter Yan versus Jin So Sun. And... To me, Jin So looks really good. I actually think he's a solid up-and-comer. I just think he's fighting someone a little too good right off the bat. To me, Peter Yan, you know I mean? He basically is 9-1, and one, and that one loss was a super close loss. And then his debut was amazing. You know, he keeps a very high pace. He throws a lot of strikes, and he has decent wrestling. You know, Jin Sun is also a good striker with decent jiu-jitsu, but like I said, I mean, Jin Sun is like 10-2 and two overall, and... I feel like Peter Yan will. Be, this could. This could, is going to be an exciting fight, I think. But I think Peter Yan is just going to edge every round and win a decision. Next is Kaleb Khalib versus CB Dalloway, and to me, uh, Khalid looks really good. It's a short notice fight, but you know he's thirteen and two, and all of his wins are by knockout except for one, I think. And 
I just feel like C.B. Dalloway, even though he won his last fight, he still got knocked out. I mean, you know, Hector Lombard hit him with punches after the bell, but uh, th that worries me. I mean, C.B. Dalloway hasn't looked as good as he used to in a while, and I think this weight cut does a lot does affect his chin because he's getting older and bigger, and it's hard to make that weight cut. And I just feel like Khalid is eventually going to catch him. I think that if he can just, you know, stuff the takedowns, he's the way better striker, and I just see him eventually landing the knockout punch, so I'm leaning towards Khalid. Next, we got Alexi, I can't say his last name, versus Tiago Alves. And to me, Tiago Alves is kind of done at this point. I feel like he doesn't fight very regularly, and when he does fight, sometimes he'll win, sometimes he'll lose. And I think he's lost his last couple, you know, before he could at least alternate wins and losses. Um... I feel like he's trying to be a counter striker, and then when he does get aggressive, he's just not as fast as he used to be, so he ends up getting caught more. I think Alexi, you know, he's 18 and 0 with like 15 KOs. I think he's the big up and comer with really solid striking. I think this fight will be fun for as long as it lasts, but I think sooner or later Alexi lands the knockout punch, and like I said, that's probably gonna be in the second round most likely. Next we got Andre Olaski versus Shamil. I can't say his last name. I felt like Andre Olaski clearly won his last fight. I thought that decision was bullshit. I thought it was 2-1. to one. I feel like there's been a lot of really shitty decisions within the last couple of months. But there's some that I'm biased towards, but I feel like that one, um, the Eddie Wineland one, and, you know, uh, Scott Joggins is one. I can't remember the guys they fought, but, like, I've seen some really, like, horrible decisions that made no sense recently, and that was one of them. And, uh... I'm just leaning towards Andre. I think he's faster and the better striker. I think these guys fight very similarly. They both have the same type of fighting style. I think they kind of come from the same area of Russia. But I'm leaning towards Andre. I think he just is a little bit faster and cleaner with his technique. And I say he wins by first round knockout. Next we got Jan Blachowicz versus Nikita Krylov. And this all depends if Nikita can like get it to the ground. I think striking wise, he's a good striker. But I think Jan's got a big advantage. I think Jan's overall technique and pace is better on the feet. Um, I do think that Nikita has a big advantage on the ground. And um, I'm still leaning towards Jan, but this is probably the closest fight on the whole card. And I, I think this might be fight of the night. This or the Peter Jan one. But uh, I think Jan will keep it on the feet. I think that he will just outstrike him by a little bit every round. If Nikita can get it to the ground, I think it could go either way. You know, Jan's never been submitted, but I do think Nikita's really, really good on the ground. But yeah, I'm definitely leaning towards Jan. I say he wins a close decision, but I think he just keeps a decent pace and, you know, just outstrikes him slightly on the feet. Finally, we got Mark Hunt versus Alexi Olenek. And, you know, this is the same thing. If Olenek can get this to the ground, he'll probably submit Mark Hunt, but I don't really see that happening. He's not the greatest at getting any fights to the ground. I mean, he can get fights to the ground, but a lot of the times he has to pull people in. And, I mean, he's good at that. Like, he can pull people in. He has that easy cold choke and shit like that. But I think Mark Hunt's movement, especially in the early rounds, is too good. And I think the striking is too lopsided, especially in the first, like, round and a half. I think that sooner or later, Mark Hunt's just going to get the distance and just land a big punch and knock out a Linux. Like I said, I think he's too fast and good at keeping the space when he's not tired. And Olenek, although he's a decent striker, I think there's too big a gap. And I think Mark Hunt, like I said, he's going to keep the space. And Olenek's going to get desperate sooner or later. And when he does, I think that's when Mark Hunt like, moves to the side and just clocks him with a big one. So I got Mark Hunt winning by either first or second round KO. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Please like and subscribe.